Animals and Scale, Part 1. The film The Crudes has a fantastic world with a rich variety of animals, and uh, one of the challenges in making such a world believable is to have character designs and animation of uh, these animals that makes the audience uh, believe that they are really uh, exist in the universe of the film. Now, in order to uh, create a sense of scale, we've realized that an important uh, factor is the relationship between the size of an object or a character and the corresponding area and a volume. Here's a simple example. Uh, the block that's twice as tall has four times the area and eight times the volume. Now, this is important in terms of uh, the scale of uh, characters uh, or animals, if you will, in that uh, the strength of muscles scales as the area because it's the cross-sectional area of a muscle that uh, determines its total strength. Uh, same thing for bones. Uh, however, the weight uh, scales as volume. So in this example, if we have a, a small leg and a large leg, the leg that's three times longer has muscles that are nine times stronger. However, that leg weighs 27 times more than uh, the small one. Now, uh, this uh, scaling has a number of consequences in terms of the motion of animals. So uh, let's start with this example. Uh, for the height that an animal can jump, uh, surprisingly, the actual height, say in a uh, number of feet, is more or less independent of the size of the animal. Okay? Uh, you see in this photo, uh, this is my cat. Uh, my cat can easily jump on top of that pot, which is about the same height that I can jump. So my cat and I uh, can uh, each jump roughly the same height, and uh, a mouse can jump about that height, uh, so forth. So uh, now, I have an advantage of having longer legs, and I also have an advantage of having much larger muscles. Uh, however, I don't jump higher than my cat because I have the disadvantage that uh, I weigh much more than my cat. So the uh, longer legs and larger muscles are almost exactly balanced by the greater weight that I have to lift uh, when I jump. Now, compared to his height, uh, my cat can uh, jump uh, quite high. So he can uh, jump on top of this pot, which is about equal to his height, and it's about a third of, of my height. Now, the uh, time in the air only depends on the height of the jump. So when uh, my cat and I uh, jump, we spend about the same amount of time in the air because we jump to about the same height. We talked about jump magnification, which is the ratio of how high you jump to uh, the distance that you push off when you uh, push off from the ground from crouch to takeoff. Uh, small animals have uh, short legs, and since they uh, all jump to about the same height, uh, the jump magnification tends to be large for small animals. So it's uh, unusual for a human to have a jump magnification that is as large as four, as in this uh, figure. But uh, for a small animal like a cat, a uh, jump magnification of four or even more would not be uh, so unusual. Uh, the timing of pushing off in a jump uh, is also affected by scale. And for small animals, since they have a large jump magnification, the push time, the time that they're pushing off on the ground uh, in order to jump, is uh, shorter. 
So, uh, as I was saying, my uh, cat is about a third my size. So, the distance that he pushes, the push height, is uh, three times less than mine. And similarly, the time that he pushes off is about three times shorter than mine. So if I jump and I push off the ground for three frames, he would probably push off the ground for only one frame. Now, a related um, scaling uh, effect is that the running speed of uh, mammals is uh, roughly uh, independent of their size. Uh, so we go from something as small as a rabbit to something as large as a giraffe or even a, a hippopotamus, and those running speeds are all in the range of uh, around 30 to 45 miles an hour, more or less. Um, humans are actually relatively slow uh, among uh, mammals. So just about all of these mammals run about the same speed, and it's again because uh, the larger animals may have longer legs and they also have bigger muscles. On the other hand, they have to accelerate all of their weight and that balances and produces this effect that um, all animals run about the same speed. Now, this is different from walking speed because walking speed doesn't really depend on the strength of muscles. So the larger animals will have a uh, higher walking speed than the small animals, but not a uh, running speed. Now, uh, although the absolute speed in terms of miles per hour is similar for all of these animals, uh, the relative uh, speed, that is uh, how much time it takes for them to cover uh, distance equal to the length of their body, uh, small animals uh, run fast relative to their size. So a rabbit covers a distance equal to its body length in about half a frame, uh, whereas a zebra covers the distance equal to its body length in about three frames. So when we're watching uh, something running, uh, that gives us a sense of the size of the animal. For uh, birds, uh, birds require uh, certain uh, flight speed in order to have enough lift to uh, stay up and because the um, uh, lift force uh, depends on the area and uh, the amount that they need uh, depends on their weight, uh, the larger birds have a higher uh, flight speed than uh, small birds. So uh, in terms of miles per hour, uh, something larger like a duck uh, has to fly um, faster than something small like a sparrow, uh, simply to get enough uh, lift in order to support its weight. The uh, shape of the wings is also indicative of the size of the bird, so uh, large birds really need um, proportionally, proportionally larger uh, wings, which tend to be narrow. Uh, small birds uh, sacrifice some of that um, lift and have stubby wings, which are uh, more maneuverable since they uh, tend to uh, fly in uh, close quarters like among trees. So. Uh, another speed which is indicative of uh, size is the terminal velocity, which is the maximum falling speed. So because air resistance depends on the area and uh, weight depends on volume, uh, you'll have small animals like a squirrel having a much uh, slower terminal velocity than uh, something large like a, like a human. So squirrel terminal velocity, maybe 25 miles an hour. Um, human is about five times larger. Uh, yet another example of um, uh, scaling is the timing of an animal's uh, shaking. For example, when an animal is shaking itself to dry itself, uh, a small animal like a mouse will shake at about 27 hertz, which means uh, 27 oscillations per second. Something like a dog, only 
about six oscillations per second, and a large animal like a grizzly bear will shake about four oscillations per second. So yet again, another uh, physical timing that gives you an indication of uh, scale and size. So in summary, uh, the jump height and the jump time, that is the time in the air, is uh, similar for all animals. Small animals have a short push height, simply because they have short limbs, a large jump magnification, and a short push time. Actual running speed in miles per hour is uh, similar for all mammals. Uh, small mammals uh, run fast relative to their size. Large birds fly faster than small birds because they, they need that lift. And also, uh, because of that, they need proportionately larger wings. Uh, large animals fall faster than small ones. That is, the terminal velocity is larger for large animals. And finally, small animals uh, shake at a higher frequency uh, of oscillations than uh, large animals. So these are all uh, physical characteristics which um, are established by uh, physical principles, uh, and most of them have to do with, as I said, that scaling uh, that is the relationship between uh, area and volume.